Hello, and in this video I'd like to explain integrals in the new calculus. First, let me explain exactly what we want to achieve in this video, and share the exact definitions of what we need to know. First, integration is determining a given area enclosed by a well-defined boundary, and area is the measure of 2D space. So that we're actually able to calculate area, we're going to use this mathematical definition of area, that it is the product of arithmetic means. To explain exactly why this definition is good, consider this rectangle. Obviously, we can find the area by multiplying the length by the height. But notice how that we can split this rectangle up like this, and just find the area by taking the arithmetic mean of the heights, which are the same anyways, and then multiplying it by the length. Quite clearly, this is going to give us the same area. As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter how many times we split up this rectangle, because all the heights are the same, we're going to always yield the same area as a result of finding their arithmetic means and multiplying it by the rectangle's length. Now consider this irregular area. Of course, to find the area, we can just find the area of each rectangle individually and add up all the area. But alternatively, we can just find the arithmetic mean of all the heights and then multiply by the length of this shape. This is because the arithmetic mean does nothing but redistribute all the heights evenly and thereby redistribute all the area evenly, transforming the irregular shape into a rectangle with the same area. This is exactly what arithmetic mean means. It is important to understand that no area has been removed by this procedure. Area has only been rearranged. And also from the formulas themselves, it's quite easy to tell that they're the same by the distributive property. So in essence, this is how we find areas. We just redistribute all the heights so that they're all the same and then multiply by the length of the shape. This also holds for a triangle. We can derive its area formula by splitting the triangle up like this and rearranging. Now we have made all the heights the same, and now we are able to multiply the length by what evidently is the arithmetic mean of the heights. And in order to adopt more reflective terminology of what we're actually doing, from this point on, I will refer to arithmetic means as level magnitudes. So to extend this idea of finding areas of shapes to functions, it is logical that the area under a given function would just involve finding the level magnitude of all its heights and then multiplying it by the interval width. In order to do this in the easiest way, we surprisingly have to think of the function g as the derivative of some other function f, where for reference, f can look something like this. So now it becomes clear that finding the level height of f prime of x is the same as finding the level slope of f of x between a and b. The level slope of f of x between a and b is given by f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If you're sceptical, don't worry, I'll prove it shortly. And to express finding the level height of f prime of x between a and b, we're going to use a new symbol. And now, to find the area, we just need to multiply by the interval width. And this is our area formula for the area under f prime of x between a and b. As a matter of fact, the level magnitude of f prime of x happens to also be a height of the function at some point c. And we actually have the tools to find exactly where c is. If we remember the definition of derivatives, we can simply take m to be this distance here and n to be this distance here. Therefore, n plus m is the same as b minus a. Stuff cancels, and we are now able to set up these equations relating c to b and a. And with the auxiliary equation, we now have all the information necessary to find exactly where c is. But now it's about time I show you a proof of why the level magnitude of f prime of x is what it is. This is a picture of the interval over which we want the level magnitude of f prime of x. Now, we can split this interval up into k subintervals. This allows us to identify some points along the interval, and the endpoint will, will just end up being b minus a over k times k plus a, which is fine because it simplifies to b anyways. Now, on these subintervals, we will have some points whose derivatives can simply be determined from the endpoints of the subinterval. The reason why this is possible is because this is the definition of derivative at each mu, where n and m are distances from mu that produce the derivative. Now these mu's are special in the sense that adding n to a mu results in the upper interval limit and subtracting m from mu 
results in the lower limit for the interval. That's exactly why mu's exist, for which these fractions produce the derivative. But now we're interested in the level magnitude of f prime, which is quite clearly this expression which I wrote down over here. Now let's work with this expression and simplify it. We can quite clearly take the b minus a over k out of the denominator, and the k's cancel. And now, quite clearly, what we have here is a forwards difference with respect to s, and by a very important summation difference theorem, which I will prove in a different video, this expression can be simplified to this. Now, all we need to do is simplify this, and there we have it. The level magnitude of f prime of x in the interval from a to b is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, now let's see a specific example of how we can use this to find specific areas. Let's take this function as an example, and we want the area under x to the fourth divided by 2 between negative 1 and 1 1.5. We derived the area formula earlier, and let's just plug in everything that adapts to this specific case. Quite clearly, the most straightforward way to find the area is by simply finding a function whose derivative is x to the 4th divided by 2. An example of such a function is x to the 5th over 10. And now we can just find the area by calculating this difference over here. And this is the area. Alternatively, we could of course find the level magnitude of x to the 4th over 2 between 1.5 and negative 1. But that quite clearly results in the same calculation as before. So that calculation isn't really anything different. Alternatively, we could of course find the point on this function that represents the level magnitude in this interval in order to find the area. For this, we obviously need these three equations that we observed before. And for specifically x to the fourth over 2, these equations look like this. And now we just need to solve for c. Okay, good. We solved for c. Now let's replace f prime of c with what it is and plug in c into this equation. And we get the area. And it's obviously the same area as before. Now to conclude this video in a nice way, let me derive the area of a circle formula. So we know the easiest way to find an area is by multiplying a level magnitude by an interval length. But what interval length and what level magnitude should we use? Well, why not use the radius of the circle? And the level magnitude of what should we use? Why not the distances around the circle? That is, its circumference. So to find the area, we just want to multiply the interval length, which is the radius, by the level magnitude of the circumferences. The formula for the circumferences is 2 pi r, and the level magnitude of 2 pi r on the interval from 0 to r is given by this. And now we can simplify this expression, and there we have the area of a circle. 